Hi, future leaders. My name is Jada Weatherspoon. I'm so pleasured to be here and to read a book to you all today. So I am from Ann Arbor, Michigan. I went to uh, Carpenter Elementary School and I'm a native of Ann Arbor. I went to Skyline High School as well. Um, and then uh, middle school, I went to Scarlet. So um, today I'll be reading you a book, but a little bit about myself. I currently attend Wayne State University in Detroit, Michigan. And um, I'm currently studying political science uh, in order to be an, uh, a lawyer. So a lawyer is somebody that helps people um, um, it, regarding the right things in life to help them uh, sustain their liberties, their, their, the, the, uh, to sustain laws that are in place as of today. And then also to assist those in need, right? If you get into any trouble, that's who they call the lawyer. Um, and so I'm also a daughter um, of two amazing parents. I'm also a sister of two brothers. So um, that's just a little bit about myself. Um, and so uh, the Black Lives Matter principle that I'll be reading today is globalism. And globalism means that we are thinking about all the different people from all over the world and thinking about the ways to keep things fair everywhere, right? And so um, we just want to keep that in mind as today I will be presenting Malala's Magic Pencil by Malala. So um, I'm not going to butcher her name, her last name. So bear with me with that. But feel free to go look her up and what she, what, what her story is. I mean, she's an amazing woman um, today, but she's been through some things in life and um, many of us have, right? And so go check her story out. She's amazing. And, and obviously I'm going to read this book to you today. So I present to you Malala's Magic Pencil. Do you believe in magic? When I was younger, I used to watch a TV show about a boy who had a magic pencil. If he was hungry, he drew a bowl of curry and it appeared. If he and his friends were in danger, he drew a police officer. The little boy, the, the boy was a little hero, always protecting people who needed help. How I wanted a magic pencil too. If I had a magic pencil, I would use it too. Put a lock on my door so my brothers couldn't bother me. <laughs> Stop time so I could sleep an extra hour every morning. Erase the smell of the trash dump near our house. And I would use it to make other people happy. I would draw the most beautiful dresses in the world for my mother the best buildings in the valley for my father so he could open many schools where children would study for free. A proper ball so my brothers and I no longer had to play with an old sock stuffed with rubbish. Every night before I went to bed, I wished for a magic pencil of my own. And every morning I would wake up and check my cupboard but the magic pencil was never there. One day I was drawing, I was throwing away potato peels and eggshells at the dump. I was wrinkling my nose, swatting away flies and making sure I didn't step on anything dirty in my nice shoes. When I saw a little girl about my age sorting trash into piles. Nearby, boys were fishing for metal scraps using magnets on strings. When my father returned from home or from work, I told him what I see what I seen. It made him sad. Abba, I said, yes, Jeannie. He said back, I always liked when he called me dear one. Why haven't I seen that girl in my class? Because he said, but he didn't finish right away because Jeannie, 
In our country, not everyone sends their daughters to school and some children must work to support their family. Those boys will sell the metal scraps they find. If they went to school, their families would go hungry. School was my favorite place, but I had never considered myself lucky to be able to go. My father had always said, Malala will live free as a bird. Now I wonder how free I truly be. That night, I thought about families who didn't have enough food and the girl who couldn't go to school and even about how, when I was older, I would be expected to cook and clean for my brothers because where I came from, many girls weren't allowed to become what they dreamed of. I knew then that if I had the magic pencil, I would use it to draw a better world, a peaceful world. First, I would erase war, poverty, and hunger. Then I would draw girls and boys together as equals. Over the next few years, instead of wishing for a magic pencil every night, I worked hard in school every day. I wanted to be one of the top students in my class. But soon, powerful and dangerous men declared that girls were forbidden from attending school. They walk the streets of our city now. They carry weapons. One by one, girls stopped coming to school. Abba, where are all the students? They don't feel safe here anymore, Chini. How could a few men stop all the girls in our valley from going to school? If more people knew what was happening to us, I thought they might help. Wishing wasn't enough. Someone needed to speak out. Why not me? I wrote about what it felt like to be scared, to walk to school and how some of my friends had moved away because of the threat they face in our city. I wrote about how much I loved school and how proud I was of my uniform. Once I started writing, I didn't stop. I wrote speeches and traveled around my country sharing my story. I even talked to a reporter from a famous international newspaper. People actually wanted to learn about my life. I, I spoke for all the girls in my valley who couldn't speak for themselves. My voice became so powerful that the dangerous men tried to silence me, but they failed. And now my voice is louder than ever, louder because people have joined me and people and, and together we make a chorus, standing up for what we believe. We raise our voice, our voices for those in need, help people in danger, even if they are an ocean away. Think of the world as a family. Do you still believe in magic? I do. I wrote alone in my room, but people all over the world were reading my story. Millions now know, now know it and helped me spread my message of hope. I had at least, I had at last found the magic I was looking for in my words and in my work. I am Malala. I've always wished I could make the world a more peaceful place. And every day I work to make my wish come true. One child, one teacher, one book and one pen can change the world. Dear friend, I used to watch a TV show called Shaka Laka Boom Boom. It was about a boy named Sanju. 
who can make anything real by drawing it with a magic pencil he found. Sanju and his friends were always getting into trouble and the magic pencil would help them get out of it. But my early childhood was mostly trouble free. I grew up in a beautiful Swat Valley in Northwest Pakistan, the sister of two cheeky little brothers and the only daughter of a resilient mother and inspiring father who was a school principal. Trouble came to my valley when I was 10 years old and girls were forbidden from going to school. At first I thought, what can I do? I'm just a child. As I watched my father speak out for girls' education, I realized I had a voice too, and I wanted to use it. I believed then, as I believe now, that all children should have access to education. When we, when we are young, we feel powerless. We rely on adults to do the serious work. However, when real danger threatened my right to go to school, I felt stronger than ever, and I found power in my voice. Once I wished for Sanja's, Sanja's uh, magic pencil, now I know that when you find your voice, every pencil can be magic. I hope that my story inspires you to find the magic in your own life and to always speak up for what you believe in. Magic is everywhere in the world, in knowledge, beauty, love, peace. The magic is in you, in your words, in your voice. Malala. About Malala. Malala first came to public attention by writing for a BBC Yurdo about life under the Taliban using the pen name. The Taliban had forbidden girls in her region from going to school. Soon she began to speak publicly about girls' education in her community. In October 2020 or 2012, Excuse me. Malala was targeted by the Taliban and attacked as she was returning home from school. She miraculously survived. Malala and her family now live in Birmingham, England, and she travels to travels the world speaking about the importance of education for all. In 2013, she started Malala Fund, which has since opened schools for girls in Pakistan as well as in Lebanon and Jordan for Syrian refugees. Of the over 130 million girls who are out of school, many are refugees. A recognition of her courageous and advocacy, or her courage and advocacy, Malala was honored with the National Youth Peace Prize in Pakistan in 2011 and won both the International Children's Peace Prize and the Amnesty International Ambassador of Conscious Award in 2013. In 2014, she became the youngest ever recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize. In 2017, Malala became the youngest ever UN Messenger of Peace with a special focus on girls' education. Thank you so much for joining today and we wish you all um, just a happy new year and make sure you check her book out. She's an awesome young lady and she's doing great work in the community.